Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. All Ukrainians living here in Tasmania have shared heartbreaking stories while condemning Russians' invasion of their homeland. Close to 100 people turned out in Hobart to protest. Many still have family in the war-torn country, but fear they may never see them again. Now a shell of its once thriving democracy. Confronting images of war in Kiev are far from the safe country these Ukrainian expats left behind. One of my uh, wife's friends, uh, she asked for a little, like transfer a little money for support and she told like, uh, yeah, I will give back if I will still alive. Today, standing freely in protest at Parliament lawns. The Tasmanian Ukraine Association calling for more support for their home and family who remain caught up in the conflict. So we don't need uh, soldiers, we don't need troops there. But we need military support. Highlighting the destruction and heartbreak of Russian invasion, Olena Kamatska's loved ones all remain in the city's capital and woke this morning to the sound of explosions. It's very hard for me uh, in general to be here in peaceful Hobart. understand that all my family now is under bombs. Emotions running high as many messages go unanswered. I don't know for now uh, if they are safe, but I'm, I'm worried about it. The state's Polish community standing in solidarity with their neighbours. It's a violation of the most sacred human rights, rights to independent life. As their country prepares for a flood of Ukrainian refugees. I think all people, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their location in the world, should stand in solidarity with the violated and brutally attacked Ukraine. Reports suggest hundreds of people have already died in the fighting as the Australian government works alongside NATO to send supplies. Even the youngest of community members turned out with a message for Vladimir Putin. Get out, don't ever come back and stop the war. Stop the pain in Ukraine! Grace Evans, 7 Tasmanian News. Turning to the day's other news now, and the Premier says he's confident Jane Hallett had no conflict of interest during her time as Sports Minister. It follows rumours circulating about her perceived personal relationship with a Jack Jumpers staff member. Stepping out for the first time as the member for Bass, Lara Alexander says she's had a whirlwind 24 hours. It's really exhilarating, um, scary. Um, I think that you wouldn't be human if you wouldn't be scared a little bit. The Premier side by side with his newest Liberal colleague, but he was also forced to defend Jane Howlett following rumours about a perceived conflict of interest between the member for Prosser and a Jack Jumpers staff member. I spoke to um, Miss Howlett after these matters were raised with my office by the media uh, and Miss Howlett indicated that there was no truth to the rumours and that there was no conflict of interest. It comes after Miss Howlett was removed from the sport portfolio in last week's cabinet reshuffle, then sensationally relinquished her remaining portfolios yesterday, citing personal reasons after the death of her brother. The opposition says the Premier has questions to answer about the timing of her resignation. He should answer what he knew when he moved Jane Howlett out of the sports portfolio. The Jack Jumpers have chosen not to comment on the allegations, but the Greens argue an independent investigation is needed to examine funding given to the NBL team during Jane Howlett's two-year tenure as Sport Minister. There are um, serious, outstanding in questions that need to be investigated. The contracts that were put in place uh, were put in place and started under the previous Premier when I was Treasurer and then were dealt with me by as Premier and, uh, and Treasurer. 
The resignation of two ministers in as many weeks has again raised debate about restoring the House of Assembly to 35 seats, some arguing a reduction in the size of Parliament 24 years ago has been a costly burden to every state government since. It hasn't saved any money, it's reduced the quality of democratic representation, it's re reduced the quality of the executive branch by reducing the amount of people available uh, to choose amongst to carry the burdens of executive government. The Premier will unveil his newest cabinet member before Parliament resumes on Tuesday. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanians for and against a controversial transgender athletes bill have come face to face on the steps of the Hobart Town Hall today. Liberal Senator Claire Chandler is seeking to amend laws which would make it lawful for sports to exclude anyone based on their biological sex. Advocates have condemned the plan. Our goal is not to take away anything. We are women, we want to use women's spaces and that doesn't actually harm anyone. This issue is completely confected. It's political, it's divisive, it's ugly and I don't think that we should stand for it. While the bill has the support of the Prime Minister, it's so far been opposed by Premier Peter Gutwin and the state's sports minister. Transport costs in Tasmania are now the highest in the nation when compared with annual household incomes. New affordability data has revealed Hobart and Launceston motorists are paying around $25 a week extra for fuel than 18 months ago. The RACT says there's no signs of it slowing down, with the war in Ukraine set to send prices even higher. The issue also compounded by Tasmania having the oldest vehicle fleet in the country. After years of performing overseas, a Tasmanian magician will bring his show back to home soil. Bodine Hatton has spent the best part of two years rehearsing after COVID brought the industry to a halt. It's shown just how resilient the industry is, but at the same time it's also shown uh, just how we've had to adapt and to change and to keep everything going. Bodine's show Up Close and Nothing Personal begins on March 3 at Hobart's Peacock Theatre. Now dumped docker Hugh Dixon could be primed for an AFL return with the West Coast Eagles. The Kingborough Tigers product booted two goals against his old club in the all Western Australian practice match. Auditioning for a role at the team up the road and the audition is going ever so well. It was a rare highlight for the Eagles, who lost by 97 points. Fremantle cut Dixon at the end of the 2020 season after playing just one game. The wild world of wakeboarding has hit Trevallon Dam, giving two Tasmanians a final run before they take on the world. Jesse Mason and Abby Guinan are now weeks away from bringing out the party tricks on Melbourne's Yarra River. Yep. As soon as he smacks down onto the water, Jesse Mason goes into another world, one where he licks the lip of the wake to twist and turn over Trevallon Dam. Aerial artistry, which the new Norfolk border has spent most of his life crafting on the River Derwent. I'm living on the water, which is the best thing I can really do for myself. Wakeboard as much as I can, whenever I can. The 18-year-old breeze through today's round of the state championship as he braces for Melbourne's Yarra for the Moomba Masters, the nation's premier wakeboarding event. It's going to be a big step in wakeboarding for me, really. It's sort of a time where I can push myself now and show really what I can do. Abby Guinan will join him. She's something of a latecomer to wakeboarding, starting at around age 12. But an appetite for big air is seeing her skyrocket through the ranks. I just really want to show that the girls can do it too and just push the uh, women in the sport and just get to travel and meet new people. Being noticed is as important as landing the eye-catching curls. Judges score a wakeboarder on their intensity along with their technical brilliance. Abby says simply learning a new trick can take months. Nailing it again and again takes a lot longer. Getting them consistent can take years, just perfecting it, making them really pretty and big. They look spectacular, especially when the border just holds on, but there's still nothing like the odd wipeout. The Moomba Masters is on in a fortnight. To basketball, the Jack Jumpers are down by 14 points against Brisbane halfway through the third quarter. Skipper Clint Steindl had his eye in from long range. Shot clock to four. They get Steindl a look from outside. He drops the triple. Tasmania beat the Bullets the last time they played in round one. 
Meanwhile, the jack jumper Sean McDonald has sunk seven points for the Boomers in their thumping of Taiwan. He also produced three rebounds and three assists in the World Cup qualifier as Australia swept past its rival 98 to 61. And the hybrid game of polo cross is holding its state titles at Quirkers Park this weekend. Nearly 100 horses charged for the ball in today's action, which is described as a fast-paced mix of rugby, netball and lacrosse on horseback. The Australian-made game has been exported worldwide, with some local riders heading to the Nationals in Ballarat next month. We cop a few knocks, we always end up with some bruises at the end of the day, but it's good fun. It's a really hot, fast game and um, we're all out to have some fun more than anything. Players aged from 8 to over 50 took part and the winners will be crowned tomorrow. Good evening everyone. Launceston the state's top today reaching 25 degrees, Burnie and Devonport 22 and 20 in Hobart. Across the state, Ooze 24, King Island and Grove 23, 22 in Lowhead, Strawn and Friendly Beaches and 16 degrees in Liawini. Mid to low level cloud can be seen about the eastern half of Tasmania today and around parts of the west coast. Further out, a large area of cloud with embedded thunderstorms covered eastern parts of the mainland, while a band of cloud crossed southwest Western Australia. Tomorrow, a trough moves towards the east of Tasmania in the easterly wind flow, while several other troughs sit over the north and west of the mainland. And we'll see northeast to southeasterly winds tomorrow, 10 to 20 knots, however lighter in the west. Showers in the south tomorrow with Hobart reaching 22 degrees, Richmond 23, a top of 25 for Ooze. Developing showers in Launceston 27 there, Deloraine and Devonport both 24. 22 degrees in Burnie tomorrow, mostly sunny and 24 in Strawn, Curry clearing showers and 22. And showers also in the east with St Helens reaching 21, Swansea a top of 22 and 24 in Whitemark. And the UV tomorrow is very high nines across the state with sunset expected at 8pm. Looking on to Monday, showers about the east extending statewide late morning, possible thunderstorms about the northern half in the afternoon. Rain forecast for the northeast and upper east coast on Tuesday, again extending across the remainder of the state. And on Wednesday, rain and warm temperatures continuing in those areas, increasing the humidity about the north and southeast. 34 in Perth tomorrow, partly cloudy in Adelaide and Melbourne, Canberra and Sydney both showers, 28 in Brisbane and 36 degrees in Cairns. And currently Hobart 18 degrees and showers, partly cloudy and 22 in Launceston and Devonport 20 and partly cloudy and Lou some showers on the way. Certainly is good for the garden as I always say, <laughs> thanks for that Chelsea. That's all your news for now, we'll see you tomorrow, Good night.